Okay, it's January 2023. We're in the middle of a recession. The market is kind of going up and down. We know gas and, and gas had gone up and down and the price of food has gone up and down. And the, we know for sure your credit cards are going up. We just got past Christmas, just got past New Year's. And at the end of the day, the question is, what is your game plan going forward? Do you work nine to five? Uh, do you do you have two jobs? Are you saving money? Are you reducing your debt? Do you have a team that is surrounding you that gives you strategies that sits and fits with your core values? If you don't know, you got to start figuring that out. I'm with my partner, Eddie Gartner, right here. How's it going, Rob? How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. And tonight we're going to talk about become the bank and change your life forever on how to get multiple uses of each and every dollar where it can go uninterrupted, get interest moving in and out of asset classes, staying ahead of taxes and inflation, lost opportunity, cost fees, lawsuit, and disability. Yeah. So, Ed, what do you think about all that? So, you know, one of the things that I think people are asking is, like, what do you mean by becoming the bank? Because, you know, the notion out there in a lot of areas is that the banks are, are scamming people, right? They're making huge returns on your money. Yeah. So, like, how are they doing that? Are they doing that? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know... Um, the bank is a pimp game, right? You got to give him credit. You know, you got uh, Iceberg Slim. He wore, he wore a mask back in 1969 when he was interviewed by the media. Go check it out. But Slim, what he talked about is he changed the game on how to create a different language. Well, that's what the bank does. What the bank does is they give us, you know, maybe, I don't know, one, one and a half, two percent. If we have a hundred grand in a CD, they're going to loan the money out over and over. It's called fractional reserve lending or the velocity of money multiplier strategy to make 40, 50 cents on every dollar. They don't take any financial risk, they take credit risk. Mm. And if you go back to 08, when we had the real estate collapse, the adjustment was, okay, if you're gonna buy real estate, you gotta put down 20% now. So even now with the real estate pulling back the way it did back in 08, it's a different game. Yeah, It's not as egregious as it was back then. Although interest rates going from two to 7% is basically squeezing in the cash flow and making it a little bit more difficult to purchase houses, but I don't see the collapse like I saw in 08. With that being said, right. the bank is making money all the way. Yeah, it seems like the bank is always making money. And, you know, this strategy of, of you know, you becoming the bank, like yeah. how how is that? Because the banks seem to be really in that cash flow game, yeah. right? More than, more than anything else. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I watch YouTube like everybody else, right? And I see people that talk about becoming your own bank and they sound really good. Yeah. And I'll tell you this right now. They sound so good. I'm like, yeah, let me go buy another policy with that guy. That's how good they sound. <laughs> but then I realized they don't have a team behind the scenes and how to do it. It's just really them, maybe one or two other, three other people. Here's right. the point though. When you look at become your own bank, think of it this way. If I'm if I'm Rob from Bayonne, right, and I want to buy a bank, Bayonne Community Bank, I got to come up with a certain amount of money, a million, two, three, four, five million dollars. I got to come up with a surety bond. I got to pass all kinds of tests. I got to wait five years. And then the bricks and mortar of a bank would exist, yeah. right? But what happens when you open a bank? What You know, there's a lot of regulation, but what is it that the bank really does? They loan money out for cars, student loans, and mortgages. Yeah. Over and over and over again, Right. Rinse and repeat. That's how they get 40 and, cents on every dollar. And whose money are they loaning out? Every well, Other people's money. Right. Not their Not money. Not their money. Yeah, they, they take credit risk, right? They don't take financial risk. It, it, exactly. And so that, that's kind of like in that strategy with the cash flow, why give the cash flow to the bank yep. if you could sit it in another vehicle for yourself? Yeah, right? so what you're saying is why put your money in a bank and put your money into other opportunities where you could velocitize your own money, yeah. right? And it sounds really good. And by the way... Whenever you hear it, just to be clear, it's not an overnight success. If you're going to do it for one month, six months, or a year, don't do it. Call right. somebody else. But if you genuinely understand it's not about compounding a product, but an overall process, compounding your wealth, stepping into a mindset of a, of a rock, if it, if it hit the water, it's not the splash. We're not going transactional. It's the ripple. And as you get closer and closer to the beach, the ripple gets bigger. And inside that ripples where all the magic is or the velocity that yeah. we're talking about where you can move money in and out of asset classes. You know, one of the things that's interesting you brought up, you said that the banks take credit risk, right? Yeah. They don't take on market risk. Yeah, if, you got, if your credit score stinks, they ain't going to give you a loan, right? <laughs> Look at all of the stuff that just happened, right? Through, you know, 2022, if you were in the S&P 500, I yeah. think you finished down maybe around 20% or yep. so. Sounds right to me. The bank is not exposed on that. No. And... Setting up a strategy like this. Matter of like, fact, the bank's corporate directors, they're buying cash cash value life insurance, right? Yeah. Like bank-owned life insurance. They're right, not, right. They're not telling, like the retail people are buying the S&P, but these folks, you know, within 401ks and everything else, but they're buying cash value life insurance, right. pension plans. It's, no? it's interesting how... Barry Dyke. What's up, Barry? <laughs> my man. Barry he told Dyke. the truth. The Pirates of Manhattan. He, he let everybody... 
They had death threats on this guy. They yeah. changed everything up on him because he told the truth. But God, I'm sorry. He, no, he did tell the truth. And and it's interesting that the the banks are the biggest purchasers, to my knowledge, of cash value life insurance. That's right. But they're not telling everybody else in their financial, you know, game nope. of what to do. They're not telling them to go buy cash value life insurance. They're Except saying, for the corporate directors. Go, go put it in the stock market. Yep. Right. The retail go, gets the poison and they buy the, the cash value life insurance. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it is. It is a crazy thing that, that they're doing. And Part so, two of, of Paris of Manhattan is coming out too. But go ahead. I'm sorry. The, well, the, the point is, right, like if, if they're steering people in all these wrong directions and there's a, a strategy around how to you know, mitigate those risks for yourself and yeah. how to, like, why aren't more and more people being educated on these things? You know, I think it goes back to the whole thing. I mean, you know, if we look, we, we can talk about the wealthy, we can talk about the Rockefellers, we can talk about the family bank that they have, we can talk about the Vanderbilts where they didn't do it the right way. And the Rockefellers, they set up the trust and every person gets a policy and they have to take, they take loans from the family bank and they keep the money in perpetuity through the death benefits, right? Yeah. That's how it stays ahead of taxes, it stays ahead of inflation, and it allows for the spend down theory of other assets, knowing the death benefit's gonna replace, right? Right. If anyone does that model, they're gonna win all day long, every day, twice on Sunday. If they do it half-assed, or if they do half measures, which avail us nothing, mm. at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be running east looking for a sunset, and you're gonna get real frustrated. And then you're gonna get people that get on and make comments like, oh, life insurance is a scam. Right. Listen, I'm telling you, it's essay, it's not a scam, <laughs> straight up. Here's what it is. If you do it for the long term or if you overfund it and if you stick to the plan, I promise you if you do that, at the end of the day with discipline and focused and being able to get multiple use of each and every dollar, you're not going to feel like you've been taken advantage of. Yes, I understand. Certain people have sold you certain policies that didn't have any cash value built up in the first year or two. That's not here. Trust us. Go ahead Click the link below if you want to grab a meeting with somebody because they'll take you through the process and show you exactly what we're talking about. Right. But to that point, Ed, it's about really understanding the product. Right. And so let's let's dig in a little bit for the people on on this to to talk about how they can utilize the cash value in their life insurance when they're looking to become their own bank. Like, what can they do with it? Are there limits? Are there restrictions? Like, you know, I'm going to answer one question. There is there, there you could access about 90, 95 percent of it as you get through right. the process, but. I think you tell a wonderful story about people. If you, and I'm going to set it up for you. If you're going to finance a car, right? Yeah. Think of it two ways. Don't think lease right now. If I'm going to, if the car is $50,000 yeah. and I pay, I pay cash for that car. Five years later, that car and that cash is worth about 30,000. Yeah. Right. If I finance the 50, five years later, the car is worth 30. The money may cost me 65,000. Yes. Right. So why don't you share, because you have a great analogy so these folks can see it a little yeah. bit differently and yeah. understand what that means. So one of the things that we talk about is the idea of borrowing money, right? And leveraging it out of the policy. And so if we think about opportunity cost, if I have a car that costs $20,000, which is probably unrealistic today, but $20,000 car, and I have $20,000 cash in the bank, and here's my alternative choice. I can either leave the money sitting in the bank earning 4%. Now, we all know the banks aren't paying 4%, but let's pretend that we could, right? And we're going to get every year uninterrupted compounding growth on that $20,000. Or my alternative choice is because I want to leave that money sitting there, I can go and borrow th those dollars. And I borrow from the bank at 6%. But the, the common sense of what most people are taught is why would I borrow at 6% and compound at 4 mm. because I'm going to lose 2% every single year. Not really. But what they don't understand or what they're not factoring in because the banks have convinced us of these things is that the debt is actually amortized. So you're not paying 6% on the full debt. As you're paying that money down, right, the total cost of borrowing becomes far less than than what you actually earn. So yeah. you're actually in the net positive. Money science alert, money science alert. Go yeah, ahead. so so if you did that over a four-year period, your net positive growth on that $20,000 is almost eight, uh, $900. It's around $860. But hold on, Here, here's what I'm hearing. You're borrowing at 6% yep. versus the 4% that you would be earning. Yes. Right? Yes. Correct? At the end of the day, because you're amortizing it down, even if it's at 6%, four years later, that $20,000 car is worth 10,000, yes. but your 20,000 is worth 20,900, is that correct? Well, it's actually worth 23,400. Okay, it's up yes, how much? It's, it's up $900 over 
your borrowing cost. Okay, so it's up 900 over what you borrowed, right? Yep. So you're plus 900. Yes. But here's the key. That money's still in the policy, so four years later, it's worth about forty, fifty, sixty thousand yeah, dollars, yeah. right? And you just because it's going. still earning a rate of return in your bank versus Toyota's bank, exactly, right? Exactly. Awesome. By the way, that was money science, folks. And if you understand that, you'll never be hoodwinked again when it comes to interest rates, when it comes to finance, and at the end of the day, when it comes to understanding the difference that money is not—it's not math; it's a commodity. It's exponential. It's not four plus four. It's four times four. Because if you consume it and put it in motion, you'll stay ahead of all the different things. Yeah. And what Eddie just talked about, after year four, it's still going to grow. Versus even if you paid off in the fourth year Toyota. And, and, and the interesting thing about all of that cash value is that once the money is in the policy, it will never stop growing. Guaranteed by contract. So, yeah, so it's it's so it's, that's what I just said. Yeah. After the fourth never, year, never ever stop growing. After the fourth year, if you look four years later, um, it's still growing yep. inside your policy. Yeah. So listen, folks. At the end of the day, check this out. On July 26th at 8 p.m., we're having a virtual live event where we're going to get into stuff like this, plus many other things when it comes to your money, time, freedom. Something your parents would have loved to have learned over the last 20, 30 years that they could have taught you where we're going to show you how to create a financial freedom map. We're going to show you where you are on the map, the questions that you have to ask yourself, how to get to where you want to go as fast, as efficiently as possible. Not on back roads, not on stop signs, not on potholes, you know, not on <laughs> um, uh, dirt roads, really yeah. getting on the super highway to be able to go from one destination to the next except you're doing it when it's not five o'clock traffic. If you could understand that and put yourself in a position to really take advantage of these opportunities, go ahead and click the link below. Make sure you register. You know, seats are going pretty fast yeah. right now and we're going to yeah. dig deep. It's going to be eight o'clock on the East Coast, five o'clock on the West Side. And at the end of the day, the event is going to be the best event for you to kick off your year and put you in the right shift and the right mindset to put money back into your pocket where it belongs. Yeah.